It's the Sin Sports Side Podcast, exclusively on 1045theteam.com. And welcome into the Sin Sports Side Podcast right here on 1045theteam.com. I'm now Eric Hanneman with your final position preview for the fantasy baseball season. I know it's a little bit late here. Your drafts are probably or could be already done. Uh, but this one isn't as important for drafts per se. It's about knowing who the closers are going to be and if you need saves, who might be available for them. So I think for this one, we're going to mix it up a little bit. I'll go through where to draft these players for sure because you'll have probably a decent amount. You still have a few weeks to draft next week's the first game. So you got really two weeks to draft for the real season, one week for the Japan game if you're trying to if you're drafting before that one. So we'll, we'll do the drafting first. We'll do the same, uh, uh, the same strategy. We'll also go through some other players to look out for the next man up. Up, uh, that we are looking for for each team that could be pretty good. Other relievers on the teams that could put up a big strike. Now, who's the Josh? Like who's the Josh Hader going into this season? Um, and I'm not sure that's easy to pinpoint because that's an insane what he did last year. But who's the reliever that might not get saves? Who who's going to strike out a lot of people and then could could do it? We'll, we'll give you some uh, usual suspects for that uh, going into the season. We may be right. I may be right. We, I may be wrong. I don't know. But uh, we're going to start with the rankings right here. First of all. Let's talk about the reliever position, uh, where it's important. In rotisserie and category leagues, where they're important is because if you can load up on saves, that is huge because it's one category. Unless you're playing in a league where it's saves and holds, I think that's new age. If you're combining the two, I think that actually changes the game a little bit. But the standard is still saves. So you need to go up and load on saves. It's important to get some good closers. But I still think there's a position that doesn't come off the board that early. Uh, I, I think that they could end up being at, at earliest, if probably in points leagues, uh, maybe a third or fourth round pick, maybe a little earlier if you're feeling if you're feeling uh, a little bit, uh, for lack of a better term, ballsy. But uh, look for points leagues, the reason why relievers can be very important in points leagues is when you look at it uh, from a position of a standard ESPN league where there are pitching game starts limits. It's important to have uh, solid relievers in there who don't count against that. You can get, get points any day of the week. If you're playing in an innings limit league uh, I, anywhere, then you know it's a moot point. But in the game start limits, relievers are more important. Like You can go in a points league uh, where you have game start limits and only draft five starters that you could think help you that per week. Probably a little bit more than that, but also load up on good uh, relief pitchers. But especially in the rotisserie leagues, category leagues, when you need saves, it's important to find out who's going to be the next man up so you can possibly speculate and go out and get those guys. You might be able to boot one of those categories um, if you're not pro- if you're not in the in the hunt after two months. You probably you probably can boot the save and, and go elsewhere and look for the better ratios from the pitching side and, and pick up an extra batter if you need to drop a, a closer. Uh, that's that's on you. That's the strategy that you can make yourself. But uh, we're here, here. We're gonna go through these. We're gonna go through. We're gonna do the usual. Uh, who's the number one closer? The essential pick, of course, and of course the deep, deep sleepers. But uh, actually, instead of the deep, deep sleepers, we're gonna go over the next man up, uh, and then of course the the suspects that I mentioned at the top of the podcast for who could be a Josh Hader type this season. We have a few of them, of course, going into the year. So let's start off with the number one pick that seems to be the unanimous according to these rankings is Kenley Jansen. For the relievers for the second year in a row. Yeah, a little bit of a down year last year. We know what happened with his a uh, little bit of a heart scare. I think he had a surgery this past offseason, so he should be ready to go. And here we're going to um for, to him right here, 55, and a very close with Edwin Diaz and Blake Shrine and two the two best relievers from last season. Edwin Diaz in a, a same face, but in a different place. Of course, he's with the New York Mets now uh, in a really tough division. But that what that means is they're going to have some close games. They're going to really be a very close uh, with teams like the Phillies, Nationals, uh, and of course the Braves as well. So that could lead to a lot the same amount of saves that he had last year, which was probably hard to get because you have how many saves and close games the Seattle Mariners played in last season. Um, so to expect the amount of saves, uh, 57 probably is not going to happen again, but, uh, that, but the reason when he initially got traded there, it was, well, are they going to be able to win enough games, uh, to be worthy to have a closer? Well, I think that's also a moot point nowadays, because I think this is a team that looks to have a decent chance to be a competitive team and at least win close games that give him a chance to be a big part of this team in terms of maybe even two winning saves so he's gonna to have to still have a lot of saves at one end is Blake Trinan I think with Blake Trinan it comes into is the ERA gonna fall Blake Trinan should be the number one 
pick off the board if his ERA falls. He'll get you wins too on top of saves. But that ERA from last season is really is going to be really hard to reciprocate. Um, or uh, reciprocate is probably the wrong. I think the wrong word. Uh, repeat. But uh, 38 saves last year. You also had nine wins, uh, 100 strikeouts. So the strikeouts are there. But the .78 ERA and the .83 whip are things that I don't know if I respect from Blake Trinan. But if you're willing to bet that that's going to happen again from Blake Trinan, I think he's a number one closer. But Kenley Jansen is probably on the the best team in the worst division, if that makes sense. Um, maybe not the worst division. I think you can look at Brad Hand and the Indians. We'll get to him in a second. But what I mean is is there's not in a great division. I think the Rockies are going to be actually competitive. I think the Padres will be competitive, of course. But they're still the team that's favored in that division. So you can expect him to yeah, you know, have a floor of 35 saves. He had 38 last year in the down year. But I'm thinking back to the 40s. Back to the 40s and saves. The, his ERA was bad last year. I think he has a chance to get back to the sub-2 ERA. Um, over 100 strikeouts. So I think he he's probably your number one, but I'm okay with taking DS tr- and trying it over him. And I guess I'm okay with taking a role to Chapman. I just don't know if he's going to be able to be durable. They like, play the P there for the entire season. Obviously, he's one of the best uh, strikeout guys in the, in the game. Uh, but I, I I think the Yankees are probably going to put he's gonna, he's probably going to see a disabled list stint at some point this year. So I think I have to to say that I would not draft Chapman over those three. Ed, uh, Edwin Diaz, Kenley Jansen, or Blake Trinan. I'm fine with any of them, but I probably stick with that Kenley Jansen uh, as my as my number one. But it's okay to take Diaz or Trinan. Uh, moving forward, uh, Roberto Azuna is probably the next one off the board, followed by Felipe Vasquez. I think Craig Kimbrell finds himself uh, if he finds himself on a team. I think you draft him, but now you're in a position, especially if you're drafting in the AL or NL only leagues, of maybe wasting a pick on Craig Kimbrell, who might not even be ready for opening day. Uh, and that could hurt you in a history league because he's a guy not getting saves right away. Uh, but he's going to be your ninth inning guy probably wherever he signs. And then the, here's the thing. We don't know where the heck is that going to be. And if you're drafting a guy like David Robertson or you're drafting uh, other players, in uh, who, what other other suspects? Uh, if you're drafting Sean Doolittle, these are guys who could lose the saving opportunities. These are high-ranked guys we'll get to in just a little bit. So if Craig Campbell signs, you know, he's a big wild card right now. Uh, as, you know, I, I thought you know, by recording this one as late as I am, I thought he'd be signed by now, but no, he's still a wild card in your drafts. But uh, I don't know if you're taking him in the top 100 at this point. I think I take Brad Hand over him. I think I take Kirby Yates over him. Look, Kirby Yates is a big time uh, guy this year. He's take, he took over for Brad Hand uh, in San Diego, and he can rack up the strikeouts, and he can really do a good job there in San Diego on a team that's maybe expected to win more games and have chances to give him the, the, the saves this season. So I like Kirby Yates, Brad Hand. I, I just compared him, um, Brad Hand, to uh, uh, Kenley Jansen for the simple fact of he's on a the best team in the worst division, right? Uh, the AL Central is not going to be good, and he can have chances to close things down when all is said and done uh, more times than not. And he's got the official starting, or, excuse me, save closing job uh, that he did not have for sure before last year when it was between Cody Allen, uh, himself, and Andrew Miller at times, I guess. So there's the certainty now, and I think he actually needs to jump up around Roberto Ozuna, although he's an elite closer now that he's got a set spot on one of the best teams in baseball in Houston. Uh, you know, whatever ha- happened in his past, he's the guy there now, and he is a really solid option. I think Felipe Vasquez has continued to prove me wrong. I continue to, to avoid him in drafts because I never really feel like, you know, I never, I've never felt behind him as one of the best closers in the league, but his last two seasons have been very, very good. The strikeout totals are close to 100 strikeouts. They're not necessarily the ratios that you would love, but there's there's still above the inning pitch strikeout totals. Um, and the saves of 37 last year puts him right in this conversation. So I'm all for him taking him, but I personally would like Kurt, Brad Hand and even, yes, Kirby Yates a little bit more. And even David Robertson has a chance. If he does get that uh, closing job in Philly, it depends. If we're getting the White Sox, David Robertson closer, which is probably the closest thing we could compare this to, I'm not sure I love it. But if we're getting the guy that was pitching for the Yankees last year, just in a ninth inning set role, I like it. I like it a lot. So it depends where your confidence level is. I'm not taking him over Vasquez probably, but I like what David Robinson can bring you at a solid round. Uh, you know, that's in 11th or 12th round, the 10th closer off the board. I'm all for it. Um, especially if 
you know, you're not confident Kimbrell's going to get the saves. I'm all for David Robertson. And you're going to need more than one. Let's let's run these down. Um, I am not confident that Rosal Iglesias in terms of he- uh, he- hefty save totals. If you're drafting a guy that you think is going to get a lot of strikeouts, they going to get a lot of appearances, and still can get you a lot of points in a points league, 100% you're drafting him. But at this point, if you're looking for a, a consistent save guy, Josh Hader and Rosal Iglesias ranked around the same area. You're not necessarily taking those guys for saves. You're taking them for ratios. By ratios, I mean the ERA and the whip, which should be good. The strikeouts for Hader, best in the league last year, an insane total that you're expecting. Maybe not the same amount, but very much a high, high total. And same thing for Iglesias, but you're not necessarily going to get the saves. These guys are prob- If these guys are locked into closing roles, and Hader more than Iglesias, they are probably some of the top. Uh, Hader's the number one reliever in fantasy if he's locked into a closer role. But uh, Iglesias probably be ranked a little bit higher if he was locked into a closing role in Cincinnati. But we know from Bell now that he that uh, in Cincinnati that uh, that is no longer going to be the case for him. Um, new manager, new new situation there. They have other relievers, I guess, that they're willing to to to. And it, it is the new way of things, right? Um, the way that, that people, you know, like I, like I just mentioned with Josh Hader, Craig Council does things over there. That's the way he does it. You know, he, he has Jeremy Jeffries, uh, who we'll probably talk about in just a second, as well as Corey Knable, um, that are probably going to be more closers. So David Bell, the manager of the Cincinnati Reds, is going to say, hey, look, I might have other options in Cincinnati here. I have Amir Garrett, who I guess, uh, spoiler alert, is... The poss- you know, the next possible, uh, you know, one of our suspects to be the next th- or this year's uh, Josh Hader. So he has other options he could use possibly in the ninth inning. So he might be going that way too. But I still expect Iglesias to get you 25 to 35 saves. That's the range. And 35 is still pretty solid. So maybe I'm overreacting a little bit live here. I already mentioned Sean Doolittle. If Kimbrell signs, it's unfortunate, but he's still a really good reliever. The reason why you probably don't draft him isn't because of that. I think it's because of the possible injury concerns. So, so there's that with Sean Doolittle. Uh, but I'm still all, um, willing to take him. Jose Leclerc is a guy I really, really love. He's like he could be my essential pick, and I'll, I, you know, I might just mark it now because he was so good at the end of last season. And I know it's insane to put a guy who's ranked 14th on this closer list, who's not going to be taken to possibly the 15th round the way he's ranked um but look at what he did at the end of last season 85 strikeouts and 57 innings pitched on the entire year with 12 saves but if you look at his game log down the stretch he did not blow any saves when he took when he officially took over the closing role which was probably which was seemed to be early august he did have a blown uh, four blown saves on the season don't get me wrong. I see those. I'm not blind. But when he took over for the closer, which I believe was early August, he converted 12 saves and his ERA in August was zero. And his ERA in September was, you guessed it, zero. One of the best closers down the stretch for the Texas Rangers last year. He has locked into the role. He had uh, 18 strikeouts in 10 innings in August, 11 strikeouts in eight innings in September, and no runs allowed in both of those, converting 12 for 12 saves. That is amazing for a reliever. So the way he's ranked right now, I know it's not you're not going to expect it, but he's got that Blake Trinan upside, the really, really good ERA, and maybe even better strikeout totals. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe even, you know what? Uh, the the thing about Blake Trinan is he's he's been used in situations where he comes in and pitches two innings and can get a lot of wins. That's something that uh, Mel Bob Melvin does over there well with with the with the A's. That gives you a big confidence for Jose or for Blake Trinan. But for Jose the clerk, I am not sure what the Rangers man, uh, manager is now going to do. I know that there's a different talk uh, of what teams are doing. Um, you know, with their, with their bullpen, like I was just mentioning with David Bell and the Cincinnati Reds, but I look at Chris Woodward, the manager of the Rangers, and I say, I don't know what he's going to do. But if he's going to give him opportunities to get wins, you know, and bring him in situations where they call it late in games, like what Bob Melvin has done, then I'm, I think LeClerc is probably has the potential to be Blake Trinan of last year, and he's ranked this low. So... Lock it in. Don't wait to the end here. Jose Leclerc is my essential relief pitcher. 
It's probably the lowest ranked essential pick from any position that I have done this season. Let's move on to Ken Giles, Wade Davis, Corey Knable. Those are the three we're going to look at right now. Uh, Giles is ranked the highest. Wade Davis was very bad at times last season. He continues to pitch in Colorado, so you continue to avoid him. But I think he's a guy that's really you're willing to take Wade Davis uh, over a guy like Craig Kimbrell uh, if your draft is very close to the season and Kimbrell is not of uh, is not signed. You're or, you know you're punting Craig Kimbrell for a guy like Wade Davis for sure, probably for Corey Knable as well because he seems to be the guy favored to get the most saves in Milwaukee at the moment. Uh, Ken Giles is an interesting one. Uh, I think you could expect over 30 saves here, but he he had blown up at times. The pressure's off, though. He's not in Houston anymore, so expect 30 saves from him. Uh, The ERA will be better than the 4.65 he had last year, and the strikeout totals need to improve for him to get to elite status like he once was supposed to be, you know, in his prospect days with the Phillies and his starting days with Houston Astros. But um, if he can get the strikeout totals up and the ERA down... Like we we know he can get, especially with the pressure off a little bit in Toronto. I know he's going to face a lot of Yankees and Red Sox and a good underrated Rays team, but I still think he could be a really good closer. So he's a guy that I'm willing to take a chance on here uh, to be a possible uh, really big steal. Um, let's move on to our deep, deep sleepers. And by that, I mean, let's go to the closer depth chart. We'll start with the AL East. Uh, Michael Givens in so this is what we're doing here instead of the deep, deep sleepers. We're going to go through every single team very, very quick. I already mentioned a lot of them, but that's the top 15 closers. You're probably drafting them a little bit past that. If you're in a rotisserie and you really need saves, but in a points league, how far are you willing to go? I, I just mentioned Jose Leclerc was on one of the worst teams last year in the Rangers. It was really important down the stretch. So there's going to be some good closers. We're going to get to them here, uh, but we're going to give you the next men up after we go through each team. Um, I'll give you the names that I really expect to be the Josh haters. That's how I'm doing it this year. If you have any questions past that of where you think you should draft any of these guys, like a Jose Alvarado from the Rays or anyone like that, you can tweet at me at EricH1045, or you can tweet at uh, Mike James and myself at Sportsside Tweets. Uh, and of course, Mike James, uh, to promote him, my co-host is at Mike James 1045. Uh, starting with the Baltimore Orioles, uh, Michael Givens is the closer, but you got a new manager there in Baltimore and he's saying that he's not guaranteed very similar to what we've already heard from David Bell. Uh, he's not going to be having a set closer per se. So you're probably going after Givens, but I avoid the Baltimore Orioles. If you can, uh, I mean, he's the only option go for it, but, uh, I'm avoiding the Baltimore Orioles uh, closing situation. The next man up would be Richard Blyer. Uh, but once again, Givens is my guy there. I'm, I had no confidence in Richard Blyer to be a consistent safe source uh, throughout the season. For the Red Sox, it's interesting. Craig Kimbrell, Craig Kimbrell is gone. Doesn't look like he's coming back unless some miracle happens. He's willing to take less money. Maybe he does come back. But right now, it's Matt Barnes' job to lose. But he's in a battle with Ryan Brazier. I think I'm fine with either one to take. Uh, but I think Matt Barnes has the edge up here. Zach Britton is the, is the next guy up for the Yankees uh, past Chapman. Let's go to the Rays. Jose Alvarado and Diego Castillo are the favorites, but this is a Rays bullpen that you're probably drawn to avoid. Kevin Cash has been so much uh, with the matchups and different things. So Alvarado is really high talented. If he gets consistent saves, I think he's worth drafting a, you know, in, in every league. But the problem is, will he get consistent saves? Because this is not a consistent and conventional bullpen being run by Kevin Cash. Uh, the guy behind Ken Giles, next man up, would be Ryan Tapera, if you were wondering. But that's Giles' job. Uh, he'll have to blow a lot of saves for him to lose that, in my opinion. Uh, an interesting one to look at is actually the Chicago White Sox. They traded for Alex Colome, and I believe, was it a trade? No, I think it was just a signing. They signed Kelvin Herrera. It was definitely just a signing for Herrera, but they traded for Colome. So it looks like Colome is going to be the closer with Herrera as the setup man. Herrera spent brief time last season as the Royals closer and actually the Nationals closer for maybe I think a little bit before Doolittle came back. Uh, he is still going to be the setup guy. I think Colome is the guy you want to own here. Um, I think he's been, I think he's middle tier. I think he's late middle tier. I think he's 19th, 20th closer for me. Colome. He could be a really good one. Brad Hand, the next man up for them is Adam Simber. So Brad Hand is, has that thing locked up. Detroit. Sean Green, uh, or Sean Green, Shane Green is your closer there. Not much confidence in him, but if Joe Jimenez, who is the next in line, uh, gets the job, I think he's a guy that's really, really willing to look at. So maybe handcuff him. If you have Shane Green, maybe you go with both down the stretch here. Maybe you go with Jimenez if you're looking for the guy who's going to get the saves because I think Green could lose that pretty early on. Royal signed Brad Boxberger, but it seems like Willie Peralta could 
could still be your closer in Kansas City. The guy to own here, though, is Brad Boxberger. So go after Brad Boxberger. Um, even if he's not the closer, he he probably will be at, at some point. Twins have an interesting situation. I think Trevor May is the guy to own here. Taylor Rogers has a chance at it as well, but May has breakout potential. So that's a deep, deep sleeper in Trevor May that you could be looking at uh, to get late, late, late in your drafts. And he could be a really important piece to a Twins team that could. They're on and off, on and off. Good team in 15, bad team in 16. Wildcard team in 17, bad team in 18. This is the good year, and they have some interesting pieces looking good, like Byron Buxton. So this could be a good team. They, they're they underrated in, in the acquisitions. Nelson Cruz, Jonathan Scope, etc. Max Kepler. Can, so this could be a team that really performs this year, um, and Trevor May would be the guy to reap the benefits from the closing side. Roberto Robert, Azu, Roberto Azuna, Ryan Presley would be the next man up. I mentioned Cody Allen, but not in this capacity. He is now the closer for the Los Angeles Angels. I think he's worth owning um, you know, when you need where you need saves, so he could be a cheap option, but he's not. There's not much confidence in him to have the best ERA, the most strikeouts. It's not the type of closer he ha- is anymore. It seems. Um, but he's an interesting guy. Uh, the ERA is not something that I, don't, I expect to improve. I think it could be better. It's, it should be better than 4.7, but still, I think you're looking at uh, Cody Allen, and you're saying he wound up in a good spot where you know he's gonna get saves, but I don't love it. Ty Buttery. Ty Buttry is a guy to, you can handcuff him with, and I think he's a good option there as well. The guy coming next been up for the Oakland Athletics is Lou Trevino past Blake's, Blake's Trident. Edwin Diaz is old home. Seattle has now Hunter Strickland as your main guy there. I think he's worth taking a look at. Anthony Swarzak would be the next man up. Strickland was pretty decent in his chances with the Giants in the past. Uh, so maybe give him a chance if you're desperate. Uh, Rangers, the clerk next man up after him would be Chris Martin. Let's go to the National League East. Eridis Viscaino. Probably don't want to own him, in my opinion. I think he's been too injury prone. And I'm not sure he's even guaranteed a, a, a short leash or a long leash. This could be a short leash. So look for AJ Minter to be the next guy. So that's a guy I would probably target if you're looking for saves late in your drafts. Miami Marlins have also said Don Mattingly looks like he's going with another one that's closer by committee. Uh, I use that in quotes because it's like matchup. So it's not really a committee. It's just kind of mad matchups. Drew Steckenrider is the favorite, though, with Sergio Romo close behind. I probably avoid that bullpen. But Steckenrider has the strikeout potential. So if you want to go for one, go for him. We know with the Mets, the backup is Jury's Familia, but it's Diaz's job. Uh, uh, so only an injury would make you go and pick up Familia for saves. Uh, David Robertson, we mentioned Sir Anthony Dominguez is a guy who was important last year. He could be a hater type this year, but he also can get saves if Robertson is not rock solid in the ninth. They might decide to go with Robertson in the eighth and Dominguez in the ninth, or possibly lefty matchup. Dominguez, in the, you know, they could match this thing up. Gabe Kapler could do that. Uh, the next man up for behind Sean Doolittle in Washington will be Trevor Rosenthal, who has looked better, but uh, I'm not sure you'd really trust him in the ninth inning role uh, because his last opportunities in the Cardinals was not very impressive. Cubs going into the season while Pedro Strope as their closer. Brandon Morrow is a guy to probably to target late in your drafts if you have a DL spot or an IL spot, whatever you're calling it nowadays, uh, to stash if you're looking for, for saves late in the year. Uh, Strope will probably get the chance right off the bat with Steve Cichek right behind him. But I look at uh, Brandon Morrow as the main guy there for when he does get healthy. But the problem is um, his right elbow, <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to be Ever the same this year, so who knows how that's going to work. I mentioned Amir Garrett behind Raziel Iglesias, but Jared Hughes is also a guy who could be right in line. The Brewers bullpen, we've been pretty, we've been pretty up to date date on that one. Corey Knievel, Josh Hader, and Jeremy Jeffress are, are the three people that could possibly get saves there. Pirates, the next one up after Felipe Vasquez is Keone Kella, who has uh, experience doing it in Texas, but the only way he gets his chance is if Vasquez gets injured. Uh, Cardinals is an interesting situation. Jordan Hicks seems to be the favorite to get the closing job uh, with Andrew Miller, the next in line for saves. But another wild card here would be Carlos Martinez coming back and getting a, a bullpen role and maybe taking over the ninth inning spot. Uh, but we don't know what his timetable is. So Hicks is a guy I'm really targeting in drafts because he could be one of the best relievers in all baseball this year. Not exaggerating. He really could be. So look, look, really target Jordan Hicks late in your drafts because he could be a total bargain. Could be one of the best. You know, he throws super hard. And he can get guys out. He was impressive last season. So look for Hicks. The other guy, though, could be a um, a wrench in this is Alex Reyes. If they put him in the bullpen, too. I'm not sure where their, their heads are at. Uh, but I think if you're buying a lottery ticket, this is the this is this is the the, the numbers right here. Uh, these you're, you're you have 95 percent of the lottery tickets if you're picking Hicks. Um, 
I'm not sure the lottery is the best example here. My point is, if you're betting on somebody to get the closing role, it's Jordan Hicks, and he's going to do a heck of a good job. Uh, let's go to the NL West. R.J. Bradley probably is going to get the chance at the closer, but last year he should have, and he didn't. It was Brad Boxberger. So Greg Holland now being there, who knows? Greg Holland could get a chance. So keep your eye on this. You want to draft Bradley, but Greg Holland is the next in line or could possibly be the first in line. Who knows what they're thinking toward Lavolo in Arizona uh, this year. Uh, Wade Davis, the guy behind him would be Scott Oberg. So not as much of a threat as Adam Ottavino once was behind him. So maybe more uh, security there for Wade Davis, but still not your best option, uh, especially with his struggles with Colorado in, in Colorado, with Colorado and in Colorado. Uh, of course, a lot of pictures do have that problem. Kenley Jansen, the guy behind him is now Joe Kelly, but Jansen has that job locked down. Kelly will only get opportunities if Jansen has more injury problems. Kirby Yates probably has this thing locked down for a little bit too. Craig Stammon is the guy behind him. And the Giants, once a good place to get saves, now isn't as good. Uh, but Will Smith is the favorite. If he's injured, uh, Mark Melanson is probably the next in line. Let's talk about the chances of guys being the Josh Hader types. Um, I think you go with Amir Garrett, I already mentioned. I think Jordan Hicks, even if he doesn't, has a really good chance. Uh, and it depends on San Diego. I think I mentioned him in the starting pitcher podcast with Matt Strom. If Matt Strom is not a starter, he could be a Josh Hader type. He's a lefty. He could come out of the bullpen. So I have no idea what San Diego is going to do with Matt Strom. If he's a starter, he's still worth, take, he's worth taking a look at. But he also could be a relief pitcher and still be just as valuable and be that Josh Hader type. I mentioned Amir Garrett. He might be Josh Hader light. He might not have the ERA, but I think the strikeouts could get pretty good um, and and a decent ERA right, to, to boot. So that's a better Reds team as well. So who knows? He might be able to get some saves eventually there too. And then I, I, of course, mentioned Jordan Hicks. Uh, I know I just said he could be one of the best close, close but he, he, he's he got that hater upside of a reliever. Not many people are drafting. I think he went in the 21st round. Uh, Josh Hader did in my league last year. This is a guy that's probably around the same area this year, Jordan Hicks. And I think he have a really good year. And that's my hater type, those three. If you have any hater types, I would love to hear what you think about those two. I could share them with the rest. Uh, just a re- give it a retweet on uh, on Twitter at Eric H1045 because I would love to hear uh, your your shots. Call your shots on who's going to be this year's reliever because who knows? This is not easy to pit, not easy to predict um, who's going to have that type of season. Even though Josh Hader is one of the best starting pitcher prospects before he did what he did last year, I'm not sure anyone saw that coming per se because uh, that was a historic type year. This is going to wrap up our preseason coverage of fantasy baseball here on 1045theteam.com. Uh, I'll answer your questions throughout the season on Twitter and on this podcast if you ask any. Uh, once again, that's at Eric H1045. I will probably check in, talk some fantasy throughout the year, probably a 10 to 15 minute podcast to get, you know, to give you any advice, um, whether there are questions or not. So you can find that at 1045theteam.com. Click on the podcast tab at the top and then click on the sit and sports side podcast. That will take you to a playlist that is on YouTube that you can also find on youtube.com slash team 1045 and click on the sit and sports side podcast playlist. Uh, so thank you for listening to this edition. I mentioned all those places you can find other editions of the Sin Sports Ad podcast. You can find every other position that I previewed. I hope you take a look at those if you took a look at this one. Uh, thank you for listening to this one and that one as well. But we still have much more to get to. Um, of course, we gave you the announcement that's up there as well about our show on Sundays uh, starting throughout the baseball season. Thanks to DeAndrea's Pizza. Uh, go there for your favorite Pizza needs really good buffalo chicken pizza there that I am looking forward to having um, throughout the season. I think the the thing we're going to do is probably do that show and go straight to DeAndre's Pizza. I don't know about you. That, that sounds good. Uh, we do that show. Go to DeAndre's Pizza just in time for the game to start and eat pizza. I'm all for it. Uh, there are two locations, 33 Caroline Street in Saratoga Springs, New York, of course, and then 645 Route 9 in Gansvert. Not really great at pronouncing Gansvert. I go to Saratoga Springs more than I go to Gansvort, but uh, that's in Wilton um, as well. I'll say Wilton, but it's it's really Gansvort. But 645 Route 9, uh, that's Andrews Pizza. So we're, we're excited to have those shows, and we have all the division previews coming up. I know for a fact there one will be up. I think the A. I know for a fact. Don't worry, I think the AL West preview 
podcast will be up before the Japan games next week, and the rest will be up before the season starts. So the, there's six division previews to do. They take about 30 to 35 minutes to go over. I, I can't wait to do them. It'll be a lot. Of re- I'll probably repeat myself a little bit from these podcasts doing fantasy, but I can't wait to do those. And then Mike James and I will sit down and do our official predictions. And that's more for Mike James to get his prediction on this season uh, so I can prove, so I can rub it in his face. I got more right than him. So uh, before this podcast gets to over 30 minutes, I just want to thank you for listening to this edition of the Sin Sports Night Podcast right here on 104.5theteam.com and the free 104.5 The Team app.